Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Cloud Deep Dive. Before we start today's topic, I would like to thank all of you for your support and subscribing to my channel. If you haven't, please go ahead and subscribe and hit on the bell icon to get the latest updates from the channel. So without wasting any time, let's start with today's topic. In today's video, we will talk about different type of VPC endpoint, which is interface endpoint. So in our previous video, we discussed about private links, uh, what are its advantages and how you can save money by using private link and how you can secure your environment by using private link. And we also talked about gateway endpoints and gateway load balancer endpoints. If you haven't watched this video, please go ahead and watch that video. I'll provide the link in the description below and you will also get down the upper right hand side corner of the screen as well. So let's talk about interface endpoint and how they are different from the gateway endpoint. So in our previous video, when we talked about gateway endpoint, you notice that gateway endpoints, you got some virtual gateway and a route was added in your route table and your EC2 instance uses that route table to find out that what is my next stop. So next stop is your gateway endpoint and from there you connect to your AWS service. And when I talk about AWS service, with gateway endpoint, you can connect only S3 and DynamoDB. No other services you can use by using the gateway endpoint. So interface endpoint on the other side give you uh, access to all other services. There are many services are uh, covered by interface endpoint, not all of the services, but I think 80 to 90% of the services are covered by interface endpoint, if I'm correct. Uh, and S3 is one of the service for which you can create both gateway endpoint as well as interface endpoint. Now, which one you should use, which one you should not use while accessing S3, that's a separate topic and I'm going to cover that in a separate video because that's kind of architectural uh, consideration you have to make before choosing that whether you want to go with a gateway endpoint or you want to go with the interface endpoint for S3. And I'm planning to record a separate video on that. But Let's, let's come back to our interface endpoint. So we know what is gateway endpoint and how it works. Now interface endpoint, when you create an interface endpoint, it creates an ENI in your subnet and the subnet is basically, you have to specify while creating an interface endpoint that in which subnet you want to create these endpoints. So based on your input, it creates an ENI in your VPC in your subnet and your EC2 instance, instead of connecting to a gateway or somewhere else, it connects to these endpoints. And how it connects, basically, you get a DNS endpoint for these ENIs. So I will be covering like what are these DNS endpoints and how they look like when we go to the demo part because there are three different kind of DNS endpoints. Uh, you will get it and I'll explain each one of them how it works. So you can see that like when you create a new EC2 instance, you get a DNS endpoint for that EC2 by using that you you connect to that particular EC2 instance. Similarly, uh, for the interface endpoint as well, you get a DNS endpoint for this ENI and behind the scene, what AWS does basically create a Route 53 private hosted zone where it create a records saying that this DNS endpoint is uh, will be mapped to the IP address of this endpoint or IP address of this endpoint. So each ENI will get its own DNS endpoint. So that's how it works. And once you make a request to a particular DNS endpoint, it basically maps to that IP address and which internally connect to the AWS service, whatever service you want to connect and which use your private link or Amazon network. It does not go through the internet. So next, let's go to the console. We'll see how you can create a uh, interface endpoint, what are the different, uh, different options you get it in there and we'll explain or we'll talk each options in detail and uh, we'll show in the demo uh, in the end that how it works that once we, when we don't have any interface endpoint, whether you are able to access these services or not and once we have this endpoint, how you can access these uh, services by using the endpoint DNS. I've logged in into my AWS console and to find the endpoints, you have to go to the VPC dashboard and under that you will see endpoints. Before I start showing you how you can create endpoints, I want, I want to show you that what setup I have already done to, to this demo. So what I've done that I've created an EC2 instance uh, in my public subnet 
which have connectivity to the internet and I have SSH into that particular instance and what I will be doing now that I will try to describe the VPCs by using uh, this command AWS EC2 describe VPCs you will see that this from this particular EC2 instance I am able to describe the VPCs and I am able to list down all the VPCs I have now next thing what I will do I will move this particular uh, subnet in which this EC2 instance is uh, created that is ending with 195A to my private route table and uh, how I can do that I'll click on my private route table which is created in my this VPC the same VPC will go to the subnet association and will associate it here and this route table has only one route which is my local route that means it does not have any connectivity with my uh, in with my internet so now that EC2 instance which is running in this particular subnet also does not have any connectivity to the internet so now if I try to do the same command again it won't work because it does not have any connectivity to the internet and it's not able to resolve the uh, result to any IP address or where to go it does not know so next let's go to the endpoints and see how we can solve this problem because now we have EC2 instance sitting in my private subnet which needs to connect to my EC2 services and try to describe the VPC or do any other command but it's not working so how we can do that so let's create an endpoint we'll click on create endpoint first you have to select for which service so right now we are doing for EC2 so we'll select EC2 and we have to select the first one the EC2 services and you can see here you will find all the types like whether it's a interface type or it's a gateway endpoint uh, it's like if I do for S3 you will see there will be two types gateway and interface so you can create S3 for gateway and S3 for interface as well uh, but EC2 we have only interface so let's select that next you have to select in which VPC you want to create so we will be creating in our uh, uh, default VPC where we have EC2 instance running. Next, you have to specify in which subnet you want to create this interface endpoint and based on your selection, it will create ENI in each subnet. So my EC2 instance is running in my US East 1A and for high availability, what I'll do, I'll just create it in two different VPC, uh, two different subnets, subnet A and subnet B. So it, what it, will, it will do, it will create two different ENIs, one in 1A and one in 1B. Next, enable DNS uh, name. So this is uh, to create a private DNS name or not. So for now, what I'll do, I'll, uh, I won't select this and I will show you in a diagram that what, what does it mean, that how it will affect you once you click on this or once you select this checkbox, uh, what kind of DNS you will get and how it, it will help you out. So for now, let's don't select it. And uh, next, you will select the security group. So I want to select the default security group, which has all the routes enabled. Uh, another one, you can select the policy. So like in the gateway endpoint, if you want to restrict the access for, for this uh, interface endpoint, you can restrict it by using the policy as well. And in the end, you will click on create endpoint. So it will take some time because it will go ahead and create an uh, ENI in each of the subnet and these are the endpoints you will get it so you will see here two different types of endpoints one is you will see here ec2.us-east1.vpc.e.amazon.aws.com so this is not at the regional endpoint this is created at the VPC level the next two type of DNS endpoints are created for each subnet so here you will see US East 1A so that's the subnet we selected another one we got a US East 1 1B that's another one we selected so if you could have selected uh, suppose two more subnets while creating this endpoint then you will get two more endpoints for each subnet so let's see if our endpoint is enabled or not okay so my endpoint is available and if I go to my EC2 console and we go to our network interface you will see the ENIs are created for this um, here you can see the description VPC endpoint interface 
uh, VPC. This is the endpoint 2294. And if I show you 2294. So my two NIs are created, one in each availability zone. Okay, so our endpoints are created. Now let's see, can we do the AWS EC2 describe VPC from my EC2 instance? No, we cannot do it. Okay, let's try. Can we do it by using one of these endpoints? Let me do this endpoint URL HTTPS. Yes, and we are able to do it. So I'm able to do it by using the endpoints here. So I can use either any of any of these. So suppose I'm using so one A one. So I'm able to use that one. So we are able to access my EC two service by using either of these endpoints but when i'm using when i'm not using any of these endpoints i'm not able to access it uh, now i'll tell you the reason why you are not able to access that and how you can do that okay so next let's go to the powerpoint to understand conceptually how that work when you are not providing any of these endpoints what happens behind the scene so when we just give the command aws ec2 describe vpc what it try to do that it use a default dns name and for every service we have a default dns name um, like for ec2 we have ec2 dot the region name dot amazon aws dot com and what it does that whenever either you're using this default dns name or you're not using any dns name in your entry it try to resolve to the public ip address of this ec2 instance and it try to connect these services through internet but because my subnet was not connected to the internet. Remember, we moved the subnet to a private route table where which does not have any connectivity to the internet. So it was trying to connect to the internet gateway. It didn't find an internet gateway. That's why we didn't get any result. So how we can solve that problem? Uh, because my subnet is sitting in a private, it's a private subnet, EC2 is sitting in a private subnet. And it want to connect to this EC2 instance. So one way was that we can use those uh, endpoints which we got it. Now there's a default DNS endpoint. If I don't want to use this URL, how I can do it? The another way is, remember while creating this interface endpoint, we had a uh, option of enable private DNS. We didn't select that. So what will happen if we select it? So if we would have selected that particular option, then this DNS endpoint, instead of getting resolved to a public IP address, it will resolve to the IP address of this interface endpoint. So whether you use this default DNS name or you don't use any DNS name or you use the endpoint specific DNS name out of those like one was regional and subnet level, any of these, they all will be resolved to your interface endpoints. And from there, you will be able to access your EC2 service or any AWS service based on that what you are trying to connect. So it does not require an internet gateway or it does not require any connectivity for, uh, from the internet. So next, let's go and enable that particular checkpoint, um, that the checkbox that will give us default DNS name and which will resolve to one of this ENI. Okay guys, I'm in my console and now you can see that we have only regional and subnet level endpoints. Uh, we'll select our VPC uh, endpoint, interface endpoint, we'll go to actions and first thing I want to show you can manage subnets. So if later on, if you want to add more subnets to that, uh, you want to add ENI to more subnets, you can do that as well. You can change it from here. Uh, next, you can update, modify private DNS name. So when I select that, you have an option to enable private DNS name. So let's select that option and click on modify. Now you see the moment I selected that I got a private DNS endpoint and this is the same endpoint which is your default DNS endpoint. So if you click or create a private DNS that means this DNS will be resolved to one of the IP address of those interface endpoint. If you are not selected then it was resolving to one of the uh, basically to the public uh, your what is it, the public IP address of that particular service. So let's wait uh, 
to make sure that it get available and then we'll go to our uh, EC2 instance and we'll try to access uh, VPC service by using the default DNS means. So this endpoint is available. So the changes has been applied. Now let's go to my EC2 instance and try to do the AWS EC2 describe VPC. Now we can see we were able to uh, fetch the VPC list because what's happening that is using this default DNS name and this default DNS name is being resolved to the private IP address of my ENI and from there it's able to access those uh, EC2 service and if you want we can do endpoint URL HTTPS okay I give a did a mistake here and you can see that we are able to resolve it and we are able to list it down so that's all about interface endpoints guys hope you understand in detail that how these interface endpoints work and how they are different from gateway endpoint how this dns name work how you can enable the private dns name and how you can disable it uh, so hope you enjoy the video you like the video and uh, please hit on the like button share this video with with your friends and uh, subscribe to my channel hit on the bell icon to get updates from my uh, channel i'm updating regular videos on aws services uh, both on old and new services and if you have any topic in mind on which you want to learn please feel free to reach out to me or put a comment in the section below and i'll be happy to record a video on that thank you so much guys for watching